Okay, welcome back. So here's the data we plotted and here's our regression. Now a couple of things about this. First of all, I, I kind of feel like we're wasting a whole lot of plot space here. So I'm just going to do something I like to do to pretty this up. Um, so I'm clicking on the whole plot here. So like I've got these little crosshatch things, um, borders, and I'm going to right click. Well, actually, what I want to do is put my mouse so that the value Y axis thing appears the, at the hover over and right click on that format axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, this is what's causing the Y axis to auto scale, this minimum uh, thing of zero here, right? So I'm going to do that. And what minimum do I actually want for my Y axis? Well, my minimum Y value is three, or a little over three. I'm going to go down to two just to leave some, you know, some space around to make it look pretty. But I'm going to do two there. And I hit OK. And see, now it's changed. So the Y axis just goes from two to five instead of zero to five. So I get, you know, I, I get a better use of the space for data. And then for X, I'm going to do it similarly. So hovering over the X axis, where it says value X axis, right click, format axis. And what is my, looks like my lowest X value is like, you know, a little over four. So I'm just going to make it four. So take off the auto scale on that, four. Boom, there we go. So now it's much prettier and it's bigger and we can see what's going on better. Um, so that's great. Um, so I wonder what else I should do. In. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, uh, I wonder what that sounds. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, it's new email. I've got email. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's email from Dr. Osborne, everybody. Um, and, and I'm also using Notepad as my email client. How, how strange. So I didn't know you could do that. Well, you can. Um, so here's Dr. Osborne giving us his data. Um, so, and he's apparently very excited about the snow today, as we all are. So, um, here's his data. So that's great. Now we can use Dr. Osborne's data, right? So, here's what I want to do. I want to um, incorporate Dr. Osborne's data with my own, but you know what I want to do in case he's screwed up? I mean, Dr. Osborne gets everything right, right? Doesn't he, doesn't he do everything correctly? But just in case he's screwed up, what I want to do is um, make sure I can tell in my Excel spreadsheet whose data it is. So, what I'm going to do is... Um, before I put his data in, I'm going to take all my data here and I want to move this thing over one. So I'm just going to, if you move the mouse, you know, I've selected something here. So this is like just left click and hold and then drag the box out to select. And then you put this here and left click and hold and you can move. So you just grab it by the border to move it around. And the great part is that um, all your references keep pointing to the same place. So you don't have to worry about like screwing stuff up as long as you don't, you know, Slap, smack it on top of something else. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in a, um, a, a column for source so I can track the source of each piece of data. So um, this one is me. You know, nothing fancy. And then the beauty part is that I can just grab this, pull it down, and me, 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 me. Those are all from me. Okay. And then I'm going to have two pieces of data from Dr. Osborne, right? So I'm going to make this one Osborne and Osborne. I, you know, I guess if you want this to look nice, I should, probably should have written Smith, 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 but, uh, you know, whatever. This isn't really, uh, this isn't for, you know, uh, I don't know, public consumption or look nice. This is just for my personal reference so I know what's going on. So writing me is perfectly fine here. Okay, so let's take, and I'm going to input um, Osborne's two sets of data. So first he has a, a capital H of 11 inches with a little h of 12 inches. So let's do a capital H 11, a little h of Oh, I'm sorry, not 12, 26. Okay. And then the other one is capital H is 17 inches and little h is 36 inches. Okay. Now you'll notice, so let's get rid of Dr. Osborne's email. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll email him back sometime and say thanks, you know. Now, the other thing you notice is that um, this is actually extended down and sort of automatically filled in with square roots of big H and little h. Now, that's kind of nice. So what I want to do now is, um, you know, I'm just going to trash this whole thing. So I'm going to click here, delete, um, and let's see. Uh, right, well, okay, you know what? Since I can't figure out how to delete it, let's see. There we go. Um, do I want to delete this? Or let's see if I just hit Control X. No, there we go. Now it's gone. Okay, I'm just going to make a new chart. So insert chart, and I can do it faster this time. X, Y, scatter. There we go. And let's see, axes, uh, yep, okay, looks good. 
right, okay, so, and uh, whatever this is, I don't know, okay, fine. So there we go. Um, and now here's my data, and whoa, now hold on just a minute. Um, this is kind of freaky looking data, wouldn't you say? I mean, look, here are the, here, these four points down here, I think are about what we had before, right? And they look kind of like a line, but then what the hell are these points up here? What, what idiot put those two points in? Those, those don't make any sense. So let's figure out. Now, I just asked, what idiot put those points in? The great thing about what I just did is now we can figure out exactly what idiot put those points in. So here's the point 4.123, right? And we go and look. Oh, look, 4.123, okay. So that was this point, 4.123. And then right here, the other point was 3.316. And oh, okay, so it's these two points here. And well, look. This is the idiot that gave us that data. Now, what's what's why are these so weird? What's the matter with this data? Um, let's just look at it for a second and see. Now, you notice, like in this column, all the stuff I collected, the height was you know like over 20 inches, and then Osborne's are very low. Uh, oh, that's strange. And then let's look over here. Like 20 inches is my maximum little h, right? And all the rest are below that. And then Osborne's are both above that. Wait, and now that I look at it, I see that. For all of my data points, big H is greater than little h. And for his data points, little h is bigger than big H. Well, now that's strange because little h, you know, I drop the ball from big H, boing, and it comes up a little there. Well, that doesn't work. I mean, I mean seriously, big H is down, and then little h is smaller. But what Osborne is saying is that um, he's dropping it, and then it's bouncing up higher than he dropped it from. Now, that just can't happen. So what happened there? Well, you know, there's some possibilities. One is that Osborne is, is you know, uh, can't read a, a tape measure, which might be true. It's kind of sad, I suppose. But um, the, another one might be you know, maybe too much Diet Coke, big gulps, whatever. Um, or another possibility is, is that maybe he was using different uh, definitions. Maybe Osborne said that little h was the height you drop it from, and then big h is the height it rebounds to. Oh, so, you know, maybe when I talk to him, I should put that theory forward first so that he doesn't get his feelings hurt if I just walk up and say, hey, blindy, you know, um, why is your data so terrible? But anyway, so what I'm going to do here, um, since I think that's what happened, I am going to switch this data around. So I'm going to switch these two values here, the big H values, with the corresponding little h values and go 26, 11. Okay, and over here, 36. 17. So now it's changed. These have automatically updated and the chart is updated and wow, look at that now. Those fit right in. So what I should do about this is I should say when I write a report on this, I should say, you know, the big H and little h values for the data collection from Dr. Osborne are reversed because um, I believe that he um, was using a different format. Or a different, you know, uh, notation, or or he was, you know, he was using a different convention. He was defining big H as the rebound height and the little h as the drop height. Um, even better if, if you know, I mean, I could just give Osborne a call um, or send him an email, and you know, I should turn down the volume on my phone, of course, before I call him. But I should call him and then ask, you know, hey, which one was your big H, which was your little h, and then he'd say, oh, of course, uh, big H was the rebound height, you know. So, okay, so. Um, but anyway, the point is you can track down, um, you know, the reason for this. If you can do that, it's great. Um, you know, for and maybe if you were in fifth period or sixth period, you know who was responsible for certain data points, and you could even like contact them and say, "Hey, what was up, you jackass? You know, why'd you screw this up?" D don't use that language, but you know what I mean. Um, but but if not, then at least at least knowing that these two points came from the same source tells you something. And it makes you look for a pattern between them, and then you know that's you've got a better um, justification then for you know for changing things around a bit. Now over here, my plot this looks pretty good, um, but I'm kind of annoyed by all this wasted space out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the plot axes here. So I'm going to right click on the Y axis, Format Axis, and then what I have here is it's auto scaling and putting the minimum at zero. So I'm going to take off the auto scaling feature for that axis and then let's see what's our lowest data point here uh, so about three so I'm going to set the minimum to two and then 
that seed now now my y-axis just goes from two up to five that's a little better and my x-axis um, I'm going to uh, change the formatting on that and let's say this I'm gonna set the minimum there to four I think that'll be a good idea so right click whoops hold on right click format axis there we go x four okay and now there we go and then let's plot our regression so click on the data set and it'll highlight right click add trend line linear of course check the options display equations on chart and go and there is um, our you know this is including Osborne's data which I've corrected for and um, you know and and my data and so this all looks